the only way to really make real progress where we're not just gonna get lucky or end up perhaps failing because we went in the wrong direction, the only way to make real, predictable, reliable progress is to deal with the uncertainty in the business and to do so in a very methodical way. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Welcome back to the Startup Vlog. This is episode number seven. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to make faster startup progress, how to take your startup idea and move to a sustainable business as quickly as possible, and the kinds of things that we need to think about as entrepreneurs in order to make this happen. Now, there are two key themes that we're gonna focus on in this episode. Number one is making sure that we're working on the right things. And number two is once we're working on the right things, making sure that we're being as productive as possible. And I'm gonna cover a handful of tips that you can use to make sure that you're working more effectively and getting things done faster. But both of these things, of course, work hand in hand. Now, one other topic that I'm not gonna be covering in this episode, but we will be covering in the very next episode is how to hire the right people early in a startup. And of course, that too plays a key role in startup success and achieving results faster, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this episode. So in the very next episode, we're gonna focus entirely on that topic. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on that episode. But when it comes to the topic of being sure that we're working on the right things. This, of course, is critical because there's absolutely no sense in being highly productive if we're not working on the right things. No sense in rushing to a destination only to find out that is it is the wrong destination. One of my favorite analogies on this subject is there's no sense in racing up a ladder only to find out that it's leaning up against the wrong building. So it's very important that we make sure that we're moving things in the right direction before we start talking about about how to be more productive or how to be more effective as entrepreneurs. So right off the beginning, when it comes to identifying priorities, one of my favorite insights of all time comes from The One Thing by Gary Keller. And in that book, he explains that the kind of task you wanna focus most on is the task that makes everything else in your life easier. You wanna identify the activities or the routines or the habits that if you pull off, if you're consistent in delivering in that area, then everything else is that much easier. Now, when it comes to startup life, you wanna find the activities that again, if you excel, in those areas, if you deliver in those areas, then everything else either solves itself or more likely is just that much easier for other people that are working with you or for you yourself to execute on in the future. Now, as entrepreneurs, it's very easy to fall into the trap of believing that the one thing is delivering your product, that at the end of the day, if you can bring your product or your service or whatever it is that you plan to sell to market faster, then that is the most important activity that you can pursue. But that turns out to not be true because the reason why many startups fail is they bring a product to market only to find out that it's not what customers want or that it isn't easy to market or they are unable to attract customers to the business. So a better way to define the one thing is bringing a product to market that people want and that you can easily sell and attract customers to. So it's not just any product, it's making sure that you build the right product in the right way and do so in a way that can lead to a sustainable business. And that is one reason, of course, why we focus so much in this series on things like defining product scope and gathering early customer feedback and building a minimum viable product and even prototyping and these kinds of things because what they all have in common is we're trying to tackle the one most important aspect to building a successful startup and that, of course, is dealing with uncertainty. We want to eliminate uncertainty whenever possible. That way, we can actually move our startup forward in a real way, not just getting things done, but knowing that we're really learning things. In the Lean Startup by Eric Ries, he talks about validated learning, Make sure, making sure that we're actually making progress where every step of the way, we're getting a better sense of the product that our customers want and that it is indeed something that they're willing to pay for or that we can attract customers to the business in a predictable and reliable way. So the only way to really make real progress where we're not just gonna get lucky or end up perhaps failing because we 
went in the wrong direction, the only way to make real, predictable, reliable progress is to deal with the uncertainty in the business and to do so in a very methodical way. So we've talked a lot about this in this series. I'm not gonna keep rehashing the point, but first and foremost, this is the kind of thing that you need to focus on. So if you haven't yet up until this point, I highly recommend when it comes to customer conversations, you read a book like The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. And when it comes to building a minimum viable product or a prototype to get feedback from customers, then I highly recommend The Lean Startup by Eric Reese or Sprint by Jake Knapp. Now, once you have a clear sense for exactly what you need to be focusing on to deal with the assumptions and the uncertainties in your business, whether that's customer conversations or building an MVP or more clearly defining the scope of your product, well, once you've defined what it is you need to focus on, it's time to improve productivity. And one of the most valuable things that you can do is what's called time blocking, where you set aside specific time, either every single day or during certain days of the week, where you are exclusively focused on the one thing that is most important to move your startup forward. And this, of course, is very important because in startup life, there are all kinds of things going on. There can be fires that you need to deal with. There can be unexpected information that comes in. There are so many things that you could spend your time and energy on. So if you aren't intentional, about dedicating time to your single most important activity, then it's easy to get caught up in all these other activities and not make real progress on your startup. So the idea here is set aside time that is entirely dedicated towards the one thing that is most influential in the success of your startup. Again, be it customer feedback or an MVP or defining product scope, whatever it might be, Set aside time in your calendar and make sure that you're spending time on that activity. Now, for me personally, as I've talked about in this series, I'm focused on creating the first draft of my book. I've already engaged in some customer conversations. I'm going to continue to do so in the future. But for right now, the one thing that makes everything else in my life easier is making progress on the first draft of my book. So I can complete that get that out in the hands of beta readers and start to gather valuable feedback, not only to improve the book itself, but also to improve the way that I talk about the book in my marketing and other conversations like that. So I need to start gathering more feedback, but to do that, I need to finish the first draft. So for me, I spend the first 90 minutes of every day focused on writing, making real progress on the first draft of my book. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, there's a big difference between knowing what to do and actually making it happen. So when it comes to building a habit or a routine around focusing on the single most important activity that you can be accomplishing in your startup, it pays to read a book like Tiny Habits by B.J. Fogg. In that book, he provides three very powerful powerful tips for making this happen, where you can focus on your number one priority more easily. Number one is to turn it into a habit or a routine, something that is a natural part of your everyday life, or at least recurs on a pretty consistent basis throughout your work week. Number two, focus on the way that you initiate the activity. So in my case, rather than getting bogged down around the entire 90 minute process, I focus on how I start that activity, how I fall into a flow state. Because once I start writing, it's relatively easy to maintain the activity, but it can be very hard to get started, to fall into that flow state and start making progress. So in my case, what I do is the very first thing I do in the morning, after my morning routine, when I enter my office, I sit down, I put on a pair of noise canceling headphones, I start some ambient music, no lyrics or anything like that, but just some music so that I can focus, and I start a timer on my watch. That is the three-step process that I reliably use to get into a writing state. So what you wanna do is build a simple on-ramp like this, where it's a consistent part of your routine, you always begin the activity in a similar way, and you can simply focus on a very quick, short process that allows you to get into focus. You're not dwelling on the entire activity, you're simply reminding yourself, if I do this, this, and this, I will fall into the right state to focus on doing what I need to get 
done. Now, the third step is to celebrate the completion of this tiny habit, of this quick on-ramp procedure. And this is very important because it's much easier to build a habit around something that makes us feel good than something that makes us feel bad. So when you complete your tiny on-ramp process, Celebrate it, just feel good about doing what it takes to achieve what it is that you want in life. This might seem cheesy, it might feel a little over the top, but what I recommend and what is recommended in that book is to take a very brief moment to congratulate yourself for completing this quick on-ramp procedure. So in my case, I sit down at my desk, I put on my noise-canceling headphones, I start my ambient music, I start the timer on my watch, and I take a very brief moment to congratulate myself for doing what it takes to be a writer. So I just simply say, boom, I'm in the mode, here we go. Something like that, whatever it is for you, right? Everybody's different. Maybe you like to pump your fist, maybe you celebrate in some other way, but you need some way to reward yourself for taking the action that is required to build the habit that will ultimately help you achieve what it is that you want to achieve in life. Now, one other thing I'll quickly point out, and this too may feel a little over the top or perhaps a little bit cheesy, but if you're having any difficulty at all with this on-ramp procedure, where you're doing the same thing consistently every day to get into a state of flow, what is recommended in the book is that you practice that procedure. So quite literally, in my case, walk into the office, put on the headphones, start the music, start the timer on my watch, and quickly celebrate. And then exit the room and do it again and again and again. And the point here is if you have any struggle at all building a habit, you need to get your body, you need to get your brain familiar with the process of diving straight into exactly what you need to be doing rather than being pulled into distractions or feel like you're processing things in real time where you're making a decision to sit down, you're making a decision to put on, in my case, headphones. You're making the decision to start mute. You want to get rid of all these decisions. You want to build it into a habit. And like anything else in life, habits need to be practiced. So it might seem a little over the top, but once you define what it is that you need to accomplish, once you have a clear sense of the habit and the on-ramp that's going to allow you to fall into that habit, Practice that procedure, practice doing what it takes to get into a state of flow and don't allow errors to creep in where you might be you know, falling for certain distractions or things like that. If you can pull this off where you clearly define the one thing that you need to be focused on, then you build it into your routine as a regular recurring habit. You get very clear on a starting initiating routine that allows you to get into that habit and you both celebrate completion of that and you practice doing it so that you're fully consistent around it. This can greatly improve your ability to execute on the things that are most important for your business. And if you're interested in learning a lot more about how to make these things happen, then I do recommend that you pick up a copy of Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg, or another great book on the subject is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Anyway, that's it for this episode. As I mentioned earlier, in the very next episode, we are gonna talk about hiring the right people for your startup. This is something that was requested in the comment section on YouTube. So in the very next episode, we're gonna talk about when to hire people, who you should hire, and how to improve collaboration. If you have any questions at all about anything that we covered in this episode or anything that you would like to see covered in a future episode, let me know down in the comment section. And of course, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in the next one.